All right, everybody. I'm back again. I'm Tyler Edlin with my my buddy here, Adam Duff. How are you? And we have another brush sauce challenge to critique this month. As some of you seen, it's uh, it's a sponsored to do some card art. Yep. And from Rodney's game, and basically everybody could choose three different cards to do and attempt one. So we have on this side the uh, Elf Hunters. Uh, actually, this goes over here. This is the Bone Wall card and then we have two submissions for the altar and yeah I'm, I know there was technical difficulties in regards to uploading them the, the the group really kind of made things difficult they wouldn't let anybody upload them so uh, Rodney and I worked really really hard to get make sure and gather everybody's submissions are here and we're in the Dropbox this is what was there as of this morning so this is what we went with wow. so that's the disclaimer <laughs> I'm sorry if you had work and it got lost Actually, there was a few that he wanted me to grab. There was two more um, that, that just weren't finished. So let me actually open those. Sorry, guys. I, I know Antonio had one, and, and then Isaac had one. Yeah, so, uh, hunting Tyler card. And I, so we're going to kind of give it a bit more of a trading card critique type of thing because mm -hmm. it's in a context of a certain type of job, right? So we're going to focus on that a little bit too when we're critiquing it. So let's just go from left to right. Let's do it. Hey, Antonio. Who was a guest just last month? You guys should check his stuff out. It's awesome. Do I see Zelda Zelda art here? What am I? <laughs> it's, it's, okay. the, it's the hunting it's party. <laughs> this like, is fantastic. I love this. It's yeah. super. Um, you know, it, it's it's simple and it reads extremely well. And yeah. if we give it the card art test, we you know we're going to make it this big, which is kind of representational of its actual size. Yeah. And you know, you can read it. It it makes sense and it's yeah. clear. And yeah, I like it. I would probably include some more things to imply even more motion, kind of that you already did with started working on with the clouds. Sorry, Tyler, pause one second. I'm sorry, but can I use your phone, please? No, you can't. And sweetie, don't disturb us because we're recording. Okay, pumpkin? All right. No, we really don't. All right, sweet. Okay. Sorry. Unpause. Daddy. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I would add that I think that we could stand to bring the characters in a little bit. But there's a lot of negative space, especially around the outsides. So I would it. take that in a bit, just because so in a small card, you'd probably need to take that stuff in a bit, just so you don't lose all that info. Yeah, like you could take in terms of the the real estate on the uh, cards itself. Like if we don't change the the dimensions or anything, but if the the characters were actually like like this big. Yeah. Right, yep. and then you you yeah. kind of just chop them up and you arrange them a yep. little bit more in into place. I think that would be more impactful. Yep. yep. See the difference? It's yeah, so. subtle, but and then but you get to enjoy more of that art, right? Yeah, and I'd probably break up a, a little bit more the, this line that we have running in the background here. That it's just a little bit too straight and linear for nature. Yeah. Add more of a yeah. curvature or some variety to it. And then that way it also kind of won't make a bit of a tangent cropping off right at the waist and the top of the bear as well. Yeah. But I know, I know you didn't finish this, but keep going with it. This is awesome, and I think Rodney awesome. wants to use this. So Pulled it off very quickly, too, as far as I'm as far Yeah, as I, he, he did. He, it, well, it's a good example of excellent planning in an image that you can pull something off like this very timely. And add it. some... You know, get some of those grass brushes and stuff and work. Have the grass kind of in motion, having like that soft motion blur on the edges in the foreground. Yeah. And get it all, and you know, like the dust flying through the air, and you can yeah. really capture that that sense of action with this. I think it's great. Yeah. Wonderful. And the clouds, too. Antonio's got a nice gift with those he does. clouds. Yeah. All, all right, right, here we go. I don't. Okay, Quizzical. Quizzical Quiz Smudge. Uh, do we have a name? Quizzical Unless... Smudge. That's the name. All right, quizzical. Right here. <laughs> quizzical smudge. Tell your parents, lay off the sauce. That's all I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, right. Adam speaks that I was it. All right, Adam, start us off. <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay. So what do you think? What's your what's your take on it? Value grouping. It, uh, it Just in terms of raw colors, I think it, it's coming off as a bit muddy, and that's because there's no shifts from warm to cool colors. It's all kind of very uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, for, especially for trading cards and stuff like that. If you check out a lot of the work by, you know, Magic the Gathering or Fantasy Flight or something like that, you're going to notice that uh, uh, a lot of these artists use a lot of atmospheric depth to create a big value jump between background and foreground elements, so that you're not. Uh, so when you look at it from far away, you can read it every silhouette clearly. So that's some so that's something that's very lost. When, when, yeah. we, ch when yeah. we chop it up, you get very 
much into the, the similar value range throughout the entire image. The back, you got the same value in the foreground as you do in the midground, as you do in the background, and oh, this value here, this mid-range, you know, tone um, throughout a lot of it here. This this green is is overtaking the entire image, and there's not there's a well, like, there's what Adam said. There's a lack of depth in it, and there's. Um, a little bit, it, there's not enough variety in the color variations with that green. Green's a difficult color to get right. And to get those subtle hue shifts as well as the temperature, temperature shifts are, are kind of what you want to aim for. So if this is your reference, like you could, for a card art, you would want to embellish the background by adding a little more cyan or probably blues to it. Mm -hmm. Or you could just make it yellow. Like there's ways like you want to group and simplify the basic structure you have. But other than that, you know, I like I like the storytelling. I like that they're on, kind of on the the scent for something. Yeah. Maybe for card art, the same thing that we said with uh, Antonio's, and that's like take all these elements. If this is about this as a hunting party, you'll want to make it larger. Yeah. You try to always want to zoom in as close as, as, this, close as you can without making it claustrophobic. For, for a normal situation, this would make a fine illustration and painting. But for card art, it's like you'd almost want to like crop it like this and just focus. Yeah, there you go. See? Just focus on this, actually. You yeah. know what I mean? And you ditch, ditch, ditch this, ditch this, bam, bam, bam. And then this becomes about this little intimate moment. And mm -hmm. then you can add a value structure to make it work with this. But if this was finished in that regard, I'm sure you will agree, Adam, it needs a lot of polish. Yeah, yeah. Just a and lot of time. Get references and paint and paint and paint. When you zoom in that close, you can also start indulging a little bit more in facial expressions, which is very engaging in art, right? Getting a nice, intense expression is very important when it comes to this. And thing. it's not easy, but it's worthwhile to invest the time to make sure that that's right. Because right now, he's just got a little bit too much of that dead eye type of look. Yeah. And, and that's easy to fix at this level. You know, you go and get some references, you paint over the face, and it can yeah. be resolved like this. Yeah. And that would be more obvious, too, well, again, once everything's brought up a little more clearly. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. But, you know, great job. Great submission. Very man. ambitious piece. Pretty, yeah. pretty solid yeah. references. Yep. Oh, my God. What do we got? Pyro. Oh. Elfer. Oh. Another, another classy name. I love yeah. it. What is it? Uh, pyro. Yeah. <laughs> pyro Health. Yeah. Nice uh, references, too, by the way. And I, I great composition and workflow. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Really clear, clean. Easy to read, very strong use of silhouette, not beautiful ambient depth so we can read the silhouette of our character very nicely. The thumbnail says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. You, you can see the success in the image right there. Um, I would personally just add a little bit more, maybe a bit of light coming through the wings or something to lighten yeah. up those wings a bit, uh, just to create a little bit of a value shift between the like the mace, the sword, and the wings of the beast because it kind of it, mm -hmm. it it. it we need to create a visual separation there, Touch. Um, and the orcs in the foreground look a little bit, you kind of took a bit of a two-dimensional pose to it. I would look maybe a little bit more of a three-quarter back view of that orc's face. Mm -hmm. look, uh, it doesn't look too much like a, you know, a 2D profile shot because it's a bit awkward because you wouldn't look at somebody with your head to the side like that. Um, so you but can that. soften things up just a little bit, okay. and that maybe would, take some of it away where the archer is, just to put the contrast back towards the archer it would help. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, and I think it would work really, really well. Nice yeah. rendering, you know, through and through. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Doesn't need much. Yeah, this guy looks a little too flat, like stiff, that he's kind of all crunched up, like I, I, I'm sure Adam was saying when I was doing this. But that that's like the only thing that's really kind of jarring for me. Yeah. Other than that, it looks really good. Especially next to the very dynamic perspective you have on that character. Mm -hmm. The orc, get a human reference for the orc as well. You know, just 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 monsterfy it after, but you need a proper reference for that. Love the orc, though. All right, so I know this one wasn't finished, but we can give you some pointers anyway. Isaac Yenko. Isaac, yep. Yeah. Nice. I think this is a good structure here. This is, it's you know, it reads, so... Yep. You know, at the end of the day, that's what's most important. So, so take note <laughs> when if you're if you're doing a forest scene and you're having trouble, it's all about breaking it down to simple shapes. Yeah, and cool. you'll want to continue to work on that, particularly with the trees and the edges. So, I think for you, even though you got the major shapes and tonal shifts in there now, what you're going to want to do 
before you really get into the detail is to probably solidify and and work on your edge control. Yeah. It's kind of how I'd progress from here personally. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. The other thing I would also add is, uh, again, a little bit of an anatomy reference. For instance, looking at the, the the ogre's forearms, his hand is a little off. I can see there was a lack of reference there, although the torso looks a little bit referenced. I can see the torso and the neck and the face looks good. But once you get down below the elbows, it's, you start to lose yourself a bit there. So just get some specific reference for that. Careful with the tangent where the elbow of the archer you know the the archer who's actually uh he's actually pulling his bow with the tree that kind of creates a bit of a, a, a value tangent there i'm trying but, to highlight things right here yeah um and the other tangent that was working me or there's a few actually was was the, the this tree that's perfectly kind of going around him I'd, I'd have it overlap or just yeah miss it all together so either or not this one and then right here, this is all kind of conveniently laid out. We would yeah. want to have some, probably some overlap, or just reduce him and kind of move him back in space just a tad. Yeah. Just, also, yeah. I would say about the background too, the trees you got in the background, be careful with your rhythms. You notice how a tree is like, they're all evenly spaced like mm -hmm. that? Like Break, this. Randomize that a little. Too close, one far, one larger, a few thinner. Yeah. Adam's right. Uh, in regards to design, these are all very much the same size and they're the same uh, distance. So rhythm and repetition, a principle and element of design. You want to have big trees. You want to have little trees uh, and, and vary up the distances and spaces you know, between them. Yeah. That's it. It's a, it's a simple fix at this level, yeah. but you got it. Yeah, the sketch all together is very, it's very successful. It just needs a little tweak. That's it. Good stuff. What do we got? Who's next? Hunting party by Thomas Putnam. Thomas, there we go. Let's Ooh, look, let's start crazy. let's wow. start our journey and look at the the thumbnails. I think these are great thumbnails, and I think many of these really work well. Really dynamic. I like man. Look I at like that. Fun. That's awesome. I like this one a lot. Yeah, it's got a nice jungle. I like, I like this one a lot too. Yeah, very nice. These two, I'm sold. Solid yeah. reference. Which one did he end up going with? I think a bit of a hybrid. Look at how that planning is has translated into a very nice looking image. Mm -hmm. And where we have overlapping valleys, like the back of the front of the left panther with the thing behind it, he made sure to add a highlight and some color shift there to create a visual separation. Yep. Right? Yeah, visual separation. It's all about that. Beautiful rendering. Wow. I would I would take it a step further here. Um, for see, like this is kind of making one long tangenty shape, and it's all very similar in value and tone. And I would break that up personally um, a bit more. So I'd probably you know uh, what, copy and paste this. Let me see, paste it right, and get him in the foreground. Mm, look at that. Nice. And get him is somewhere like right here. Yeah coming in right out of the painting. That way you have a nice bit of you know shape and we can see the uh, form kind of going down and it dips back and then it's coming back you know, mm. into the scene. Mm -hmm. And then continue, I would continue to accent on this side of your painting some and emphasize some cooler colors. Mm. So like here, just go up a little more, add a little more blue and not not for like everything not, and don't overdo it but there's some things you can make the forms read just a tad bit more if you had a little bit more blue uh in the um in the shadow sides kind of picking up on some of these forms mm, nice see like so areas like in here here it's okay i'm just gonna close my window because the wind is blowing <laughs> no problem the back side of this panther and in and around kind of here. Just little, it's all analogous. You have greens and blues with some, yeah. some tones of yellow. But if you do that, you can definitely get some of these uh, things to read. Just a little bit more. That's really nice. See, like this. This color here is in the shadow more. You can get a little more of that form. And then in here, warm that up for the bounce light. So it's a little more like that. 
Mm, that's it's lovely. Little, little, little subtle things. And I would simplify around this fella here, get it really to read um, just a bit. Simplify yeah. that. All right? Yeah. I think you did a great job. This is amazing. Yeah, beautiful. Really nice. Eye candy. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's look at this. Eric Taberman. Hey, Eric. Very bold colors. A little bit more World of Warcraft here. I like the bold colors. Yeah, it works. And funny enough, does not offend. <laughs> you know, like I'm not sitting there going, "Ooh, you went a bit over." You could you could play around with some more and less saturated colors just to create a bit of a visual balance with the intensities. Yeah. But you've got a nice harmony going on there, so it's not a total. You know, you haven't totally uh, lost it. One of the things I could suggest, just in terms of color, to create a bit of visual balance is. When you make that shift from warm to cool, like lit, unlit, try to make a, a tiny little bit of a hue shift as well. There's a good example is, uh, who has a good demo on that? I think it's Cynix. You might be able to check out Cynix. He has a good, where he demonstrates shifting hues from what from light to shadow. And that can create a bit of, it's a bit too flat in terms of your color shifts there. Mm. So I'm going to try to make even more of a separation between this foreground and the background. Not sure exactly how I'm going to do that, but I want to see if I can push more of one, and I think that could ultimately help you. So that, in that regard, it, it's a matter of reducing contrast and get some amplifications, kind of go back there. So maybe like some more blue in this case. Oh God, my my slider stuff. See a little more blue back there. Yeah, nice. And maybe a little. Um, a little more green, make it look a little airy, and something like that. See, so it makes a huge difference in terms of like the de the depth and the scale. And then you could even take it further if you wanted to and grab all this negative space and push that for maximum depth. Maximum depth. Seven. The secret. <laughs> So I would I'd push. Oh, that's nice. Um, See, so getting things like that, and then I would just up the saturation. So you're not just going to, you're not going to white necessarily, but you know we're just breaking. Yeah, there you go. Breaking the shapes and, and pushing depth further. Just a suggestion. Um, but I think it would work. It would work really well that way. Cause see, you you really kind of capture what you have going here. And a, a little bit of that is lost in this one for me in regards to the simpli uh, the simplicity that you had. But, you know, you have really great rendering. And I, yep. I think it's fantastic. The, the snake looks a little funky in parts in, re in regards to, like, I, you'd want to polish him up uh, quite a bit more. But, uh, and maybe reference this guy a little bit harder down here. Yeah. Uh, the, like, the forms are reading better on him in your thumbnail. Yeah, and they get a little lost here. All right, but uh, aside from that, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, good work, man. Good work. Last hunting party. All Start right. us off, Adam. Start us off. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, okay. All right, all right, all right. A little bit of an anatomy reference. Your prior, the proportions. His legs are legs are a little bit short. His butt's a little bit out of out of out of place. Um, sure. Rendering. It's got a very nice, very very playful type of rendering to it, which I find is lovely for storybook illustration and stuff like that. Um, is it too impressionistic for card art, you think? Uh, I've seen card art that kind of flirts with this 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 level of, of playfulness, but I, generally what they would ask for is a little bit, you want to have some areas of with a little bit more refinement. You know, like those trees and your silhouette of your foreground, midground, background, your character. It's a little bit too fluffy everywhere. You want to find areas of sharpness where your eyes can settle. Um, again, like Tyler has mentioned in the other videos, in the other uh, critiques as well, is you want to create a bit more of a cool, get a little bit more of atmospheric depth in those background trees. You know, add a little bit of a blue mm -hmm. um, because it's overall a bit warm overall with the with the palette. You can also bring that. I would do this, Adam. The shadow. Yeah, bring it up to the foreground. Let's get this thing to read. Yeah, like hard, <laughs> like get the uh, 
a variety of shapes and depth. This yeah. sort of thing helps a lot. So they're, they're different sizes and you know, there's more overlapping. And you just need to paint in uh, the background. Wherever that's going to be. See, like, I know what Adam's talking about. You're definitely flirting very close to the brink of muddiness. Mm -hmm. And you want to make very deliberate design decisions, I want to say, in regards to, like, okay, this is going to be the shape of the tree. Yeah. And it's going to be kind of, like, a little more like that, rather than stippling it, you yeah. know, ten times over. And then once you have this color, then you can go back in and really uh, start glazing in. Like if you wanted to push it back, then you can make it a little more blue and stuff, and you can get you get some blue over that as a shape, and and you kind of keep pushing, pushing things really from there. You can get some greens in there, whatever you want for your your sky color. But having these read as really deliberate shapes, I think for card art, is really important. The other thing that I've noticed was the bit of the tangent, Adam, about right here. We have the the tree yep. and then the tree line. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Little uncomfortable. Make it overlap out so that they, you have this sky silhouetting your character, kind of like that, really nicely. And then this is going back there, and then maybe you have a chunk of the sky, you know, in the background. Yeah, there you go. Over here, like that. It's about that that rhythm and repetition again, and faking that depth. Likewise, too, though, if this was uh, if this was card art. I would take again this whole section here, yeah, and just blow it up. Exactly. Uh, that, that, remember, two point five inches by two point five inches. That's the general average size you're going to see. Things. So even though That's you're like, oh. blowing this up huge on the screen, it's not going to necessarily translate well to a tiny, tiny, tiny little image. Yeah. So you will, you'll want to remember too, like, I, and I, just because I think that's a more common problem this this month for the card art is. That into that you know, that more intimate type of moment and bringing the action closer to the viewer. Don't yeah. be so, as a cameraman. Don't be so far zoomed out. Get up in there. Think about what the subject is. Right? Is this the environment where the archer is hit or is 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 going to skewer the wizard, or is it the archer, right, or the assassination or whatever? Then you want to see that assassination up in your face. You want to see the environment with a little assassination happening off in the distance. That's not practical from a composition perspective, right? So, it's story, image. It should co they should coalesce very nicely. Well, this one's gorgeous. Hey, this. Tapio. Yeah. Who's this? Tapio, Tapio Sudman, I believe. Right. Really, really cool. Uh, I love your atmosphere. I love your idea, and I love yep. the uh, composition. Yeah. But I think for I think a lot of people on, in regards to card art, it may be a bit too monochromatic. Yeah, but borderline. I mean, you could get get away with just adding a little bit of coolness in those in some of those grays, right? I like the I like the overall reddish, bloody, rusty feel to it. But yeah, it could use a little bit of temperature balance in there, just a touch. So like you could do anything different, but it, I, I I would just make some kind of shift so it's not so uh so not, not so samesy mm -hmm. so it, even yeah. if it's like hints of blues back here like that tiny or you see that like that'd be too, too much in a way but it's easy with levels and, and channels and even using an accent color like green you know a complementary color you could get a lot of awesome variety out of that yeah or you could go blue. There's so many different ways you could you could handle it. You could even take that and just inject like a lot of yellow to it too, which probably wouldn't look, you know, terrible. Mm, that looks nice. Yeah. yeah, there's so many different ways you could handle this. Uh, yeah, compositionally speaking, uh, I would say well, number one, again, practicality. Bring bring yourself up close to the action, and what Tyler done with the other ones, play with your scale difference, foreground, background, get a nice sense of depth. Uh, and be careful that your elements in your scene is guy shooting in this direction, one guy holding mace, man holding sword. There's no interaction. It's just random characters pointing in random direction, di uh, di uh, directions. There we go. We got it. T -t Today, Junior. <laughs> Out with it. And 
you want to create an eye flow. So one guy is going to be directing our attention to another, to another, to another. So you're creating hot this. spots so your eyes can move around. Right now we're missing that. It's a bit too guys hanging out on a battlefield type of feel, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, like, like, I'm doing like these little subtle tweaks, but you, you do them three or four times, you'll have an image with a lot of color depth and variety. Just I just tweak things twice, you know, adjustment of the sliders, and look how much kind of more... Uh, color variety we have and it's still yep. harmonized under that I'm a red palette banner. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Beautiful. I it, love it. It is beautiful. Now, Bone this. wall. Now this is the Ren this McCall. is the right over here. Who's this? This is uh Michael. Michael Michael. Patalic. Great style man. That's polished. You know, it's you polished. do your thing. This is super clear. It's super readable. I mean, I don't ultimately know if it's what Rodney would decide for if it's best for his art, but you have a great sense of style. And yeah, absolutely. Very uh, consistent as yeah. well, which is awesome. And wonderful effort in your rendering. I mean, you can see the work, the, the patience and work that you put into this. And it's not wasted because you zoomed in close enough to the action like we can actually get to appreciate this, all this hard work you've put into it, right? Mm -hmm. If you were zoomed out, then this would be a complete and utter waste of time, but you didn't. Uh, I, st I would say though, as far as like different elements, i.e. big skull, small skull, skeleton, this kind of grass field of, or this or the wall of bones, mm -hmm. it's a bit too, like Tyler would say, a bit too samey in terms of value. So you're not really getting a bit of a visual shift and not enough of a directional light. What I would be tempted to do is kind of vignette this a little bit by adding a little bit of darkness around the outsides, adding a little bit more warm light to the characters in that That's what I was just about to do, Adam. See, I was about to make some of these highlights. There you go. On yeah. these dudes, kind of like pop, so a little cast shadow on his head there. Go. And okay. then s stab him in the eye with some overlay. A uh, little bit there. Okay. And then kind of bring that down. I'd work up that anatomy and the lighting a little bit on, on the arm either way, but you could take what basically what we're doing here and just embellish it ever so slightly, kind of like what I'm doing. So if I make a selection kind of like this, and we want to get a little light on these fellas. Uh, uh, I, I ruined it. I needed this one. I think a little bit more. You gotta be. You gotta do this really delicately because you don't want to overdo it. Yeah. Some people, you know, color dodge or overlay till they completely ruin something that it would be otherwise. Yeah. Nice. So this is just a little, a little hit. Little touch. Do it on its own, its own layer, so you can come back and um, erase what you need to. You could do the same with the shadow. So, like, if we have a shadow right here underneath this dude's arm, right, and you have that huge form change, come back in with like even like a vivid or a, a color burn or something. You can get really nice, deep. Yeah, there you go. Kind of colors in in the shadows. Yeah, perfect. Just do it very delicately, uh, and then I'd probably add a just for the sake of making things really visually pop. I'd go through and add a rim light on the edges. For uh, what am I trying to say? Cool, cool light. I would think grabbing, not linear. Not, I get the wrong brush mode. I'm sorry, but grab these colors in the uh, in the uh, environment like this and add very delicately, of course, mm -hmm. a nice rim light. You can get see the the sides of the. I love it when you do that. You have these little, you always add these little color accents that really make things. Pop. It'll, it'll, it'll make your image pop. Do it from both sides, even like grab a little bit. And how delicately you actually handle this, I think the stronger it will be. This is a very bold in your face. Hey, look, I'm an accent light type of approach to it. But if you do it, you know, pick a little bit of these spikes in here, teeter it off as you get toward the center. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, blend and it, smooth yeah. it have big arms forearms in your in your face anatomy reference get a couple of bodybuilder pictures in there and use that as get some, get some the big veins all the scars you name it like all the right girl, the female there with the female uh, over on the right her arm is actually not bad but when you get into the big guys they get a little off and the placement of the arm is off too like anatomically but just that'll help too, because it'll just it'd be an irritation when you put all this effort into the anat into the rendering. You mm -hmm. want the anatomy to hold up too, right? So it's uh, the prerequisite. 
All right, Daniel. Daniel, this. Start us off, Adam. I'm resetting this, the timer. Sure. All right. So I think uh, the major, major thing here, the intention, you had a nice value block in of foreground, midground, background things to a certain degree. But I think that rim light flattens and ruins it. The rim, you, rim light has a very specific function in terms of when and how to use it and when it's a good idea. But I find that a lot of people tend to rim light themselves to death. And that in this particular case is a good example. If you look at the white bone wall in the background with the white rim light on the, on the foreground character's cape, that really flattens. Uh, you would be better off taking that rim light out or at least making it maybe a, a color. You know, like like uh, the one of the accent colors, like uh, what what uh, Tyler was playing with before, um, and be wary of the fact that using too many whites like that in images is the same as using too many blacks. It has a flattening effect. White has doesn't have much depth to it. Overdoing it can really suck the energy out of your painting in a negative way. So be be wary of that for sure. Yeah, I agree. You like you could get a darker color over here and subtly try to tone some of that white and stuff yeah. down. Maybe yeah. even trying some of the purples. Ugh. Yeah, definitely. Remember that rim light has, it's it's a light falling over a three-dimensional form. When you just have a uniform line, that is, that is implying that her arm and her shoulder are cardboard cutouts. There's no, we're not sensing that it's falling around a three-dimensional form. I would it's around the rim. I'd work this area a little bit up here, find some kind of pattern or, or rhythm or texture to put up here. I think it it, it mimics the same flow that the, the wall itself is, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so, like, if the wall is going like that, let me see. This is kind of doing the same thing. I would probably change the shapes up here a little bit so they they come in a little bit differently somehow to create a more dynamic flow. But, you know, nice job. This is a great idea. The, the composition is really cool. Yep. I think it may be hovering a little bit too much into to this corner heavy. Like, maybe if we saw a little bit more of him. and This is all, like, framed, basically, kind of like this more. Yep. But yep. I think you did a great job. This is this is really cool. Obviously, you need some rendering in here. Um, and then some reference on the metal to push that a little bit more. I think it's good, though. Yeah. And you have the mind of a fantasy artist. Like you imagine, your idea is very much in the right place for this type of work. So remember that. I wouldn't lose sight of that creativity because that definitely is a big, big uh, plus when it comes to this type of work. What do we got here? A lot of entries to the bone wall. The the competition must have been tough for Rodney to choose. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Holy smokes! Well, this is definitely a high quality piece of work right here okay. yeah i know he loves this one and i know he loves the creature back here you drew and i think he yeah. may be interested in having working with you further on that guy but yeah let's take a look at this i think this is cool really cool very I, classical fantasy for zeta quality to it and your dynamic your dynamic things i think one of the things that to me is you've got like the horse the caster this creature in the background all the bone wall, all of that together has a beautiful, unique dynamic. Everybody's kind of got their own flow and directional thing. And then her, she's a bit of a ball, and that that kind of takes away from it a little bit. She feels more like it feels this less one? Like jumping. The one on the left who's jumping, yeah, she looks less like she's it leaping, more like she's a projectile. You know what I mean? Like she's just boom, she's been shot out of a cannon. Would you change the position of the legs then? What yeah. would your what would your fix be? I would, you know, maybe one maybe one of the legs out. Like she's just jumped off of one of those, one of those uh, mm -hmm. bone spikes to show that her, she's just she just kind of launched off of it with her own leg instead of being catapulted off of it, um, and to be careful with, for instance, the silhouette of her her mace, her bone mace is kind of creating a tension with the face. I would open up that silhouette a little bit more or pull the thing back, something mm -hmm. to create more of a dynamic. Uh, you got to think of the the actual action in there rather than just the pose. Think of the, the action that got her to that place on the canvas. Um, and like the other ones, I would also say uh, your characters are all pretty uniform in size, right? 
You've got the horse, the caster, and the character. They're all they're occupying pretty much the same amount of real estate, and there's a lot of empty, neat, wasted space. So you could afford to bring somebody or something far into the foreground to create some dynamic depth, for sure. I'm tweaking the value structure because that's what I yep. do. <laughs> uh, so this is what I'm saying. We can go in here, balance out the the values a little bit more, and then kind of hit. Yeah. Hit this up with some of that the, the direct light that w was kind of like originally in there. Yeah. So like, what was the original color for that? Like reddish? Yeah. Get get some of that red. Yeah, actually, it's a really good point Tally's making there. When you're looking at fantasy art, if you're looking about like the the history of fantasy art, if you go back into the 1960s, 70s, 80s, for instance. There was much less emphasis on directional light, a lot more on volume light, which gave it that kind of illustratory kind of 2D comic booky feel to it. Where in modern fantasy art, you're going to see a lot more emphasis on the overall fall of light, directional, isolated, barn door, spotlighting on certain things, which gives everything a lot more of a three-dimensional feel to it. Less of the star old Star Wars illustration concept art mm -hmm. type of thing. Just a little something to take note of because... It works as it has a bit of that old school feel because of that. And what we're doing is we're kind of modernizing your image a little bit in the process of playing with tweaking these lights. A little bit. See for that to do something like that, right? So I'm going in. I'm selecting each individual kind of value range, and I'm just slightly kind of modifying them up a bit. Mm, look at that. Just just that color shift adds a lot of depth to those shadows. So I haven't decided if I like it cooler down here or warmer. I mean. Since it's already kind of like a, a warm palette, I feel that, like. Oh, that that's that's a that. magic tweak right there. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's perfect. And then, <laughs> like I said, I would just add the uh, the, the warm. See if, what adding that warm range really does for it, like that. Yeah, look at that. Get some yellows in there, a little bit of yellow, and then some of this magenta, a little bit, and then some, a little bit, not there, and then up into here. And it will accent a little bit of that flow with the color. So yeah, I'd kind of go at it a little more like that. And then you could selectively pull some saturation into that if you'd want to. But it helps kind of keep things a little bit separate anyway. Mm -hmm. And get these shapes to read up here where it's important. Anyway, great job. Yep, 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 yep. Very nicely done. Martin. Wow. Boom Barricade. Loving this. This really, is great. Yeah, this is very moody. Really, really nice. I love this very dark, this very overcast. You know what it makes me think of a lot of, uh, um, oh, crap, name just lost me, but a lot of uh, uh, well-known Polish Zelda. illustrators. Zelda. No, not Zelda. Yeah, it could have a bit of that to it. Chloe's been watching me play Zelda all week. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you can relate, Tyler. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I finished it. Oh, you did! I just I'm, finished it. I'm stretching it out. I'm getting the re I'm getting the guide today, so I'm going to go through the rest of it. And yes. before I the whole game? Not yet. Not yet. He did. Tyler did. What? Yeah, because he's more obsessive compulsive. I was addicted. <laughs> <laughs> we get in line <laughs> with the rest of the addicts. Yeah. yeah. Just win color. Fantastic game. Yeah. Where the hell is color ballads? I. Yeah, the overall dark feeling is reminding me a lot of like what's I. It's, there's a well, very well known uh, Polish artist who has a lot of this dark, very somber feel to his work, and I love that. And this kind of captures that a little bit. Yeah, see, I was just pulling the highlights out more and making mm -hmm. them cooler. Yep. This was all very <laughs> uniform and kind of again hovering into that muddy realm. And yeah. so to make so when you're fighting the mud, you want to make your highlights and your shadows polar opposite in terms of color temperature. Yep. So then now if I go and select all your shadow ranges, your darkest shadows, which is what this selected now, and now if I warm these up a little bit, it's going to push your forms even more. So again, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go insert a little bit of that red and yellow. And then probably jump into levels and attempt that, attempt that here as well, because it has a little bit of a different kind of effect. So that would be too much. Yeah, a little bit of that almost a burnt ember or a sepia. Yep, that's what I'm going for. Trying to get that in there. 
I would also, while Tyler's doing that, I would mention that in your highlights, when it comes to the further rendering and refining it, because it could use a little bit of sharpening, yeah. um, especially in these foreground characters, um, look for, it's a good opportunity to use texture brushes when you're adding when you're adding highlights to metal. You know, get something a bit of a grittier met metallic kind of scratched up texture yeah. for those highlights to so that every surface has a different quality to it, not just not just a value, right? Yeah, for like if you have this, this right here, if this is a metal helmet, it's not reading as a metal helmet against anything else right. in, in terms of the scene. You need to get those hot, you know, kind of little highlights that that metal kind of has. Yeah. And that may just require a little bit of um, tweaking or experimenting with the, uh, you know, the brush settings, which, you know, I don't think I had a great brush for that now, but kind of playing see that's like that's too much but if you do you know the process of elimination and just try you know different things out you can get these highlights in here no problem and it should work brilliantly I like the design of those helmets though i really like the design of those helmets really nice shape the armor overall everything just has a really I, i'm enjoying the feeling of this i will say like the characters up on the wall a little bit redundant, you know? They're all the character sizes are... Ske I would want to see that, that skeletal creature to be, you know, like a nine-foot-tall beast compared to the orcs that are a little shorter. And the spacing's very, you know, a little bit too redundant. Again, play with your your design rhythm, right? Yeah, you take, um, like, an area like this where it does look uh, a little bit... It's a little harder to transition. You'll want to add some of that... Uh, our atmosphere and simplification to make the silhouettes of like a character read. So yeah. knocking knocking this back. Yeah, there we go. Is a good way of doing that. And you know you can do that in levels. You can do it manually, like I I just did. There's a lot of ways to do about it. So if you want this gate with the, uh, the teeth, you know, to pop out, that means to come behind it and knock all that back. Yep. So if I darken it, I, I kind of grab the shape or I go down. See, like that, I, I take away the, the contrast in there. And then it's all about making the bones kind of pop up and read. And then you just make them a little darker. See, a little, little subtle tweaks with your yeah. design here can go a long way. Well, suggesting this kind of wind atmosphere, blowing sand, that kind of idea, it's bringing more of the environment, it's bringing the environment to life. Rather than making everything static and dead, there's wind and bustling and war, right? That kind of idea. All right, what do you think about Anton's? Lovely. Very lovely. I really like this. This has got a nice feel to it. Mm -hmm. Like Zelda, says Chloe. <laughs> Everything's Zelda this week. <laughs> she's obsessed with the game, too. Yeah, she's, been, she's been stealing the, the Nintendo away from me. She should just be our special our special guest this week. Adam. <laughs> Done. Yeah. She, she, she wants to weigh in. Um, I would I would try to like incorporate like a little bit of that pattern with the rocks in mm -hmm. throughout here. It looks too weird that there's nothing and then all of a sudden super super giant. So yeah. I'd I'd bring those in. And again, I would if you zoom out, you're losing. I can see how that reads very nicely in card form, but. I would, I would get, I would zoom in a little closer to that. I think we could, like your the fact that you've got the the statuette, you've got the, the kind of idol that's above the characters. You could easily just move that whole cave down, make scale up the scale it up a little bit more, so you can see there's a bit more like you know there's overlapping forms, which will give you a little bit more real estate to zoom in and oh, like everything more. back here. Yeah. So if we like you took got characters, gonna... they got the statue above it, which eats up a lot of <coughs> space on an on an already li uh, vertically limited image, and that forces you to do this to your image, right? This way, just by bringing everything down and overlapping them, it allows you to expand and zoom in more, allowing you to enjoy more of those characters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there we go. Try to do this. Like in, and the, ship in, it. in an easy way. <laughs> it's like my old boss would say, it's perfect, ship it. Ship it. It's ready to go. Something like that, where you have that overlap. And then you could take even this whole segment here. Right? And do the, do our thing where we just bring 
bring in the moment. Like, we don't need to necessarily see the top of that, I don't think. And also, like, just having it uh, slightly cut out of the frame, taking your bleed zone into account if you're working on a trading card, okay, because otherwise you'd lose it altogether. But, um, yeah, exactly like that. It's implying that it's a very tall thing because it's actually the camera cannot, you know, it's kind of like imagining that it's taller than an average human being type of idea. Mm -hmm. So I have it cropped off the top. Yeah, I think it would work just fine yeah. this way. Simplify some of these edges so they're not quite as noisy and you're good. Yeah. I would also be careful with that left side opening. It's beautiful. I love the sense of depth we get from Yeah, it, it, you're right. It's almost... But bring branches or something. Bring, cut off that section there so you, you're not tempted to... You're looking... You, I would open up the side of the image there if there was somebody walking around that corner, like Zelda, right? <laughs> and But otherwise, I would have obstructions there to show that it's just a decorative depth element rather than an eye, like mm -hmm. something that's actually drawing our attention compositionally. There's some colors in there. But yeah, but really good job. Uh, yeah, I really like the image. Beautiful painterly style. Love it. Yeah, nice use of colors too. Excellent. All right, what we got here? Who's next? Who's oh, next? we've only got a few left here. Oh, this okay. was the altar one. So I jumped. Let's do the last bone and then back to the altar. Sure. All right. Okay. This was cool. Uh, a bone barricade by... I don't see a name here. Do we have a name? No. We'll call, we'll call him Let me check Process. the file. His name's Process. R. Arsugan. 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 Okay, perfect. All right, yeah. Well, compositionally, you cropped this. You were nice up and close and personal to the character. Mm -hmm. um, be careful with the top of the head. That would get cropped off in a final. So you want to center your image a little bit more. Um, Zoom a little out. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, if you brought the character down, you've got a nice height to him, right? But because of the position of the hands, it would create an awkward tangent because he's got that low hand there. So maybe just scale the hand, scale the hand down a little bit, or do something so that it allow you to bring the character down into the frame a little bit more and come in a bit closer. And exactly what Tyler's doing, you I would break up that shape face. with, with yeah. huge like elephant tusk bones and and spears and yeah. This just it's too flat and dull of a line. That's what separates you know some of the design with this one. Yep. Uh, from you know images like we've seen here. I mean, look at the dynamicness of the way those bones are overlapped and kind of plied together with rope and everything. That's what this one's missing in regards to that that top tip of the wall type thing. I mean, and this isn't the only one to do it. There's a lot of other ways, like you know, breaking up this with big bones or, or a large bone, right? A medium bone and then the little bones in between. It's the the that variety of shapes yeah. that makes it really interesting. Everything everything in here becomes extremely uniform and expected and therefore predictable. Yep. A good a very good reference for that for you would be just in terms of design in general is check out Anthony Jones's design basics Gumroad, and he's got a very good one where he talks about these very design principles. It, it'll be huge. You it'll completely transform your image. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice job though. Yeah. Nice, nice rendering and yeah. A little bit, of, maybe a bit of color. What do you think in the clouds? Especially? Yeah, you can uh, get some color variety. This is very uniform. You could go through, at, you know, sprinkle in, you know, a little bit of anything. <laughs> anything yeah. would help. You know, so you go select color range. I've been doing this a ton today. You just select your sky, and then you can go to levels and sprinkle in some other colors that would work well. So yeah. maybe make Straight it a little more purple or make it more yellow or green. Uh, and anything. Yeah. Anything will, will, will help break that break that up and give it that little bit of that pop. Great job though. Beautiful. Like Very nicely done. Nice process. Well, I think we got one left here, eh? One we've, left. We've, we've gotten through this week. Our last altar piece. All right. So, I think this is like a cool little moment, nice little level of zoom. Um, question the scale of these characters, they feel a little tiny. Mm-hmm. They're little figurines in a big set, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then this looks like it fell victim to you had the, the value structure of your image, and then you kind of grab, you know, the airbrush... And you 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 know, tilt it on lighten or screen or something like that, right? And 
with like a lighter, warmer color, and then it just, I mean, not quite as saturated as this, but this is what it looks like happened in all here, and yeah. it gets this really soft, soft, misty feel, but at the end, it can push things depending how dark this was, but you're also kind of taking a gamble whether or not you're compromising the actual value structure and you're blowing out a lot of other colors by essentially tinting them, adding white to all of it. Mm -hmm. Where And I used to do this a lot. I was, I was definitely a victim of that in my earlier images. But yeah, there's just more direct ways of kind of handling some of that now. I don't know how... Adam, do you, do you see what I'm talking about? Or am yeah. I just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm you're just so like if this is all highlighted, that means like yeah, going in and actually working the value structure up and, and making sure you have you know the right amount of saturation in it and and adjusting the value you know where necessary so that it it, it doesn't get that hazy type of look and feel to it. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to do that with like a lot of your your main areas, I, I feel. Yeah, like two, you know, one of the things I, I kept looking at the main, our central character is the, the one who's actually, the one who's actually uh, uh, pr uh, praying or whatever at, the, at that point. And uh, you notice that the dark shadow of his arm, we lose that against the dark background a little bit. So you might want some bounce light or something like that. You've got to be careful dark on dark. It makes it look like the highlight is the only section of his arm that's visible, making him look like he's got these long stringy arms. Mm -hmm. he, he actually has more volume. You just didn't highlight that, right? You gotta be careful with those. Oh, yeah, so I'd, I'd be careful with how you do that, and then I would, I'd probably scale up all these characters, and yeah. then I'd watch your uh, your borders too. Like you have uh, this shape here, and it's almost perfectly matched on this side, yeah. and you go right to the corner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like not adding anything to the scene and it's making it more symmetrical which makes it a bit more stiff as well you know what would be nice too a little bit of bounce light or ambient light hitting off the back of the robes of those characters as well because mm -hmm. all the, the the overall geometric forms feel a little bit flat from the back especially that kneeling soldier yeah we, look, we lose oh, right we lose a lot of his information see like when we blow this up it's way too hazy and mm -hmm. flat there was a lot of information that I think you originally painted in here that was lost. Yeah. Yeah. We we don't we and there's a lot of de I can see the detail you intended, but we lose that all in the distance. It just becomes a silhouette of somebody kneeling, right? You don't want to do that. Well, uh, congratulations, everybody! It was yeah. awesome judging all these awesome uh, entries. And yeah. Thank you, Adam, for coming on and helping me out with this moment. <laughs> Always this task. Pleasure. Always my pleasure. Thank you for thank you for letting me do this. Yeah, right. no, and, uh, we both said right at the beginning the ambition, the bar. Every single brush sauce, you guys up the bar every time. Brush sauce. Brush sauce. Brush sauce. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna jump to Rodney. He's gonna show you who the winners are. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I'm here now with Rodney, the sponsor of the the challenge, and these are his three chosen winners that he wants to go with. That will be the final art that kind of makes it into his uh, game. Yeah. Um, so these guys, these were awesome. First of all, let me say all the entries were amazing. And it was so hard to pick between everybody. Let me tell you, uh, especially you guys that did the Bone Barricade. A lot of you guys, that the Bone Barricade had the most competition and it was the hardest to choose from. Um, so on the, on the top one, the top left one, that Bone Barricade, um, that is the first one. I guess I want to emphasize my pick one. I really love this image. I love the action. I love what you did with the or I love everything about this picture. It's just super awesome. And I'll even be contacting you about that big guy in the background because he fits for something else so well. Yeah, it looks well. like you got a second side gig coming. Yeah, so uh, be looking for that email soon after the video post. And yeah, that was this picture was awesome. It nailed every aspect. Um, awesome. But yeah, and then the next one was the uh, yeah the holy altar. This one was super awesome, uh, simply for the fact that. I had a whole different image in my head as far as altar, holy altar goes. I thought that I was thinking like inside of a church and you did this and it just went, wow. So <laughs> you, you did something different and unique and it still made it good enough that you hit all the points that I need to. Um, it, it also helped that you threw it on the card as like a little Yeah, nod. this is great. If we um, do this for really, the future, guys, do that. <laughs> yeah, Show us the context. It, it, it shows, and I know that wasn't a requirement, but that definitely helped. It showed me exactly what the card would look like. 
and I'm, now I can't see the card any other way. So Bonus points. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the last one, um, the hunting round had quite a few entries too, and that one was also a very hard pick on the hunting round, um, simply for the fact that you guys did so many different things with that. Um, but this one was just, again, outside of what I was thinking, but still really freaking cool. Um, I love the cats. I like big cats, and I wasn't even thinking about big cats. And the fact you tied them in, and, like the forest just looks awesome, and the elves look – it's yeah, I love that image. So um, congrats to the three winners. After the video post, I will contact you. You all three get uh, Amazon gift cards. Um, and then later on, we may do another competition. So yeah, keep up I the great work, guys. Check back in May. I believe we're going to do a, a standard kind of typical thing next month, and then the following month we are looking to do another one of these that are similar. So if you enjoyed this, you want to do it again, look look at that point. And if you wanted to do this and you missed your opportunity or something, some, there was a technical issue, you'll have a chance for redemption. But anyways, thank you all for uh, entering. And, uh, yeah, take thanks, care. guys. <laughs>